Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to part two, part, sorry, part three, um, lesson number three of our course, Basic Amara Tools, which is a course that Hadran runs together in collaboration with Yeshiva Drisha. But the materials were all prepared together with myself and Rabbi Nikhana Dreyfus from uh, Yeshiva Drisha. And I want, just before we start today, I want to let everyone know that we're starting we had last year our beginners, complete beginner's guide to Gemara course part one, and we are going to have part two starting as soon as this course ends. The details will be sent out within the next week or so. So we hope you all join. If anyone hasn't done part one yet, you don't need it to do part two, but you can very, you can, you're all invited to come on our site and listen to the lectures from last time. It was a three-part course. So these are all different methods of building the basic building blocks to be learning Gemara on your own. So what Rabbi Leia Sarna is, is a more lecture course, no chavruta, but giving you background information, historical points, and other ish, other things that come up. And it'll be kind of focusing a little bit on Mishnah, on the Stam Gemara, and also on the um, halacha, like how you get from Gemara to halacha. So that's our promo for the course. I hope you'll all find yourselves there. And, and this class, as you all know, is really more getting your feet wet. As I say, jumping into the, the water, right? You don't know how to swim yet. You just kind of dive in and start learning. So with that, enough introductions. Just quick review of what we've done the past two weeks. So the first class was dealing with who gets to go to the Irmi Klat? And we saw all different issues. Number one, you know, whether you have the rights to go in a good way that you deserve, you get the protection and the atonement. And then we have on the other hand, but may, you know, you're also punished and you need to go there. There's some people who don't even get that punishment. And we saw already, we discussed from the first course that there's a lot of issues going on here between the Irmi Klat serving multifunctions and different commentaries or different studio focusing on one element or the other. So whereas there's the issue of protection we discussed, there's the issue of punishment, and there's the issue of atonement. Last class, we didn't deal so much with the atonement issue, and today it's going to come back in full force. So last week we discussed, number one, the way to the city and the conversations that went on and what, what we're trying to avoid on the way into the city. And then also, where are these cities? And we talked about the murderers, and we had a whole big um, digression there about where we needed more cities and why and what kind of murderers were there and what causes these kind of accidental murders and our intentional murders. Do they have influence on the fact that there's also accidental murders? And we saw all different approaches, which again, kind of fit into this theme of either protection or punishment. Today, we're going to get to a very fascinating question, which is, it's very explicit in the Psukim, and you're going to see it. I'm going to start with the Psukim again today with the verses in the Torah, that when do you get released from the refuge city? So if we think about this, and it's always important when you're learning Gemara to first think about things on your own, because when you think about things on your own and then you read the sources, you realize sometimes what they're grappling with. You might not have figured it out if you don't ask the questions on your own. And this is true not just for Talmud study, but really any text study. And we're going to talk about in the Psukim, it says that when do you get out of Irmiklad? When the Kohen Gadol dies. That's a very strange what is the Kohen Gadol's death have anything to do with? Why, if I'm an accidental murderer, do I get to leave the Yermi Klat? And again, it begs the question, what is the purpose of Yermi Klat? What needs to happen if we view it as protection? So what needs to happen? Well, I don't need the protection anymore. Now, why wouldn't I need the protection if the Kohen Gadol dies? What does that have to do with protecting me from the relatives that want to kill me? And the other element of punishment, if it's punishment, well, Maybe it should be when I'm ready, right? You go to jail and you get out of jail when they decide you spent enough time in jail to be rehabilitated. But what does the death of the Kohen Gadol have anything to do with? First of all, everybody even leaves at the same time, which is also a little bit strange, right? What do you think? So we're going to have to ask this question and try to figure out what does the death of the Kohen Gadol have to do with getting out, letting all the accidental murderers out of Basically, you know, you could call it jail, maybe not jail, but out of what we called, certainly in the words of the Mishnah, exile. So with that, I'm going to send you to Chabruta. Rules for Chabruta are as they usually are. Um, Maggie will help anyone who needs some help with getting in and out of rooms. And we will break for about a 45-minute, uh, maybe 43-minute Chabruta period. <laughs> 